Hello and welcome to the pilot first episode of the Boxer Briefs podcast. I am your host, the Wild Man. And I'm Cole, and I'm happy to be here discussing this fight game with you. And uh, we all know that uh, this is not game, this is fight. And in the words of Triple G, I love fight. Love to hear it. We're looking forward to talking all things uh, boxing and fight game with you guys, as we can appreciate all things boxing and, of course, a good old clean pair of fine men's underwear. Before we get things going, uh, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, one of our supporters, our good friend Sage at Cambridge Sage Realty. If you are in the greater Boston area, for all your realty needs, check out Cambridge Sage. You can find them at Cambridge, C-A-M-B-R-I-D-G-E-S-A-G-E dot com or on Instagram under Cambridge Sage. If you're buying, you're selling, you're renting, or you just want to talk to a great handsome guy, Check out our friend Sage. And we got Gula Studios uh, for all your illustration needs. Uh, on Instagram, Gula Studios. Gula Studios. Thank you very much. Did I say Gula Studios? Follow them, Instagram. All over it. All over it. Love it. Let's go. Shout outs to Sage and Mateo for all their support. Uh, let's dive right off the deep end calls. Okay. What the hell is going on with Canelo? This dude signed a massive contract. Uh, we saw commercials. We saw magazine covers. You name it. This guy was golden boy, zone all over the place. $35 you know, over, million a fight? That's about what he was looking for. It was over a $300 million contract. Um, this guy had it all lined up and... A couple months ago, we started hearing that there's uh, more problems between him and uh, his previous idol, Oscar De La Hoya, and uh, DeZone. He's not happy. He's not getting the fights he wants, and he wants out. I feel like that was only two months ago, and then uh, this past week, we find out that he has officially become a free agent in the fight game and is no longer affiliated with Golden Boy or DeZone. Well, obviously, obviously, they threw... The zone together pretty pretty quickly there, um, trying to um, capitalize on this on this market with the the non non pay per view here, which I, I think all us boxing fans were like, yeah yeah this is great, um, but after a while after you boil boiled it down a bit it was uh, you know it kind of like some of the other things we see in boxing we you know maybe we're not so sure uh, that the zone is is the way so. Um, I, can, I can see maybe why Canelo was ready to uh, part ways. And I guess the contracts were thrown together so hastily that uh, he was able uh, to navigate his way out and uh, become a free agent. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, we're, we're paying 100 bucks a year. We're going to be we're, – we're told we don't need to uh, pay for pay-per-views anymore. We've got Canelo. We've got Anthony Joshua. We've got some of the up and comers like your boy Jaime Munguia. Um, Triple you know, G. Triple G signed. Uh, Devin Haney. You know, the big talk was is that Triple G signed to the promotion. So he'd have uh, the opportunity to do the trilogy fight with Canelo and, and get that yep. underway in the next year or two. And now all of that is just up in smoke. And we may never get to see the, the third fight. Hey, they, I mean, if we don't get to see that third fight, no one is more disappointed than me. I mean, I uh, feel that Triple G got absolutely robbed in that first fight. Um, was at the Boxing Hall of Fame a few years ago and ran into uh, my man Teddy Atlas. And uh, I ran, I, yeah, I ran that same scenario by him. He said, uh, he said I felt the same way that Triple G won, but he, he also said that there's some people uh, who, who he's associated with who uh, didn't feel like he should be talking that way. Uh, so, so that was a very questionable, in my eyes, uh, win by Canelo. The second fight, I think you do have to give a slight edge to Canelo. To me, Triple G retains the title the first time. If he fights him again, you got to take the title away from the champ. So the, the second one to me was a draw. The first one to me was a Triple G victory. 
And in my mind, uh, Triple G is the rightful owner uh, of, of the crown in that division. For sure. And, and, you know, the next thing that's up for Canelo is, is that he's still looking for that $35 million uh, payday per fight. And times are tough right now. People aren't going to be wanting to, to spend, you know, 75 to 100 bucks on a pay-per-view, especially after a lot of people feel like they got duped by, uh, you know, DAZN and, and paying 10 bucks a month or the, the upfront $100 a year. And right. we're going to be having to pay 75 to 100 bucks now to watch a guy that we were promised we'd never have to pay again at a pay-per-view rate to see fight. Um, we don't even know what kind of promotion he could be going to. People want to see him go to top rank so they could see him fight um, under the Aram uh, card there on, on ESPN and ESPN+. Plus. People think we could get a lot of uh, advantages out of that. You get to see him on um, those two platforms, easy to stream, uh, five, six bucks a month you're paying for that. You know, that's chump change. Or he could end up on Premier Boxing Champions under the uh, Al Heyman card, which a lot of guys would like to see as well. But even there, we'd be seeing pay-per-views. He'd be doing the Fox and the Showtime pay-per-views. Um, I don't know what he's going to do or if he's going to do a fight-by-fight -fight plan, but people are saying that he wants another long-term deal. And we're starting to see that more, uh, more commonly now in boxing as it is a dangerous sport. Guys want guaranteed upfront money. They want these long-term contracts like a – you know, a baseball player, a basketball or football player, they don't know, right. you know if their next fight's going to be their last fight. So these guys want guaranteed money. They want to sign on the dotted line and, and get check after check. And $35 million a fight, that's, you're looking at around a million buys on a pay-per-view for him to get that kind of money. I can only think of one name out there that would even come close to getting 100 million views, and that's Triple that's G. True. And at this yep. point in time, the rumors are swirling that Canelo doesn't want that fight again that he, he's looking at maybe the Charlo brothers. And, and now we're hearing that he's likely going to be fighting um, Callum Smith uh, yep. next month. Um, again, people are a little bit confused by that because it would only give them each a five-week camp. And is that the fight people really want to see for a 168 belt? No offense to Callum, but that's not what people are, are excited about right now. No. No. Um, you know, if I'm Canelo, we'll, we'll play the other side there. You know, I don't want a piece of Triple G again. Like I said, in my eyes, he's, he's the rightful owner of the, uh, of the middleweight crown. And, um, you know, I, I don't think he – I think, you know, he, he thinks that Triple G is a threat, which, which, which he is. Um, it just depends on, on who's judging it uh, for the evening. And, you know, with the power Triple G has, uh, Triple G's still got a lot left in the tank in my eyes. I agree. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see that trilogy fight at some point. Um, it's a little confusing in the deep, dark brain of the boxing world to figure out why they're saying that the leading network to host this next Canelo fight is DAZN after we just went through this whole rigmarole over the last three plus months of him wanting to get out of it, him getting out of it. And now all of a sudden they may be hosting his next fight. So I don't think I want to dig any deeper. I'm going to get dizzy and confused and upset and we got a show to host. Well, uh, if you're, if you're uh, a fan that's watched enough bo boxing as wild man and I has, uh, you know, I, I got my bets on it's going back on the zone. Uh, for the next fight, at least. I would agree with you. And if it is, I can guarantee you I'll watch it. If it's 75 bucks to watch him fight Callum, I'm probably going to sit that one out. Yep. I, I'll, I'll be sitting that one out with you. Speaking of DAZN, we had the uh, pleasure of watching a none other than Mr. Devin Haney this past weekend. Oh, sure. Uh, the uh, w, WBC lightweight champion um, went up against Urukoi. Gamboa, a seasoned veteran who's had a lot of big fights. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you, Calls, wasn't that impressed. We heard, we heard Haney talk all this smoke about how this was such a challenge for him and, and, you know, this was the next guy up because nobody else wanted to fight him, so they, they had to handpick him because he was the only guy that would do it. Um, he was going to put a hurting on him worse than Crawford ever did. Crawford got a knockout victory against this guy. Haney got a convincing win, but not an impressive win. I think there's a difference there. 
it, a 38 year old Gamboa. I mean, uh, guys literally in the twilight of his career. And I can see Haney, you know, taking a tune up fight here and there, but um, with this star studded uh, lightweight division, we, we need to know who's the best. We need to know who the pound for pound is. Um, you know, uh, up until recently, it was uh, Lomachenko. And after the loss to Tia... Lomachenko? Lomachenko. After the loss to Tia Fimo, uh, you know, there's question now. Is, is he the pound for pound? And, and I think that's what people want to know. In my eyes, he's still the pound for pound. Okay? He, he, he fought injured. Uh, which, in my opinion, is a big excuse for losing that fight. Uh, I think the real discussion was the fact that he did not start fighting until the seventh round uh, and fought well for the last five to six rounds. So it, in my eyes, you can be the pound for pound and have lost a fight. Now, if Lomachenko turns around and loses to a, to, uh, a Ryan Garcia, or fights Tiafimo again and loses to him. Now we got to start talking about uh, crowning a new pound for pound. Yeah, I think there's definitely been a bit of a shakeup there in the top five, top ten. We had a, a handful of these uh, of these lightweights and you know eking their way into the top ten. And I think uh, you know Lomachenko lost that fight. Tiafimo calls himself the takeover, said he's taken over the division, and after he owns this one, he's going to move up. Um, we saw a great performance last week from, from none other than uh, Devonta Davis, Tank, had a great knockout over Leo Santa Cruz. I thought that was a very worthy opponent for him to fight, um, and I thought it was a, a great win for him. I mean, those two guys were slugging it out, and uh, Tank, who, who has had problems in the past with what people have called focus and, and making weight, um, he was ready to go. He was ready to go for that fight, and... and he, he took it to Santa Cruz, and Santa Cruz was taking it back. And I thought that that was a, a great battle back and forth and um, pretty well respected between the two of them. And, and Tank showed us something. I mean, that was a, that was a statement win. He, he took out a guy that has been at the top uh, or towards the top of that division for a few years now, and um, he got himself a knockout. You know, he came with an uppercut from hell, and, and yeah, that's all she wrote. Uh, I was pretty excited to see Ryan Garcia step up and was going to be fighting Luke Campbell um, next month in about three weeks, actually. And we just found out this week that Luke Campbell came down with a little my, 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 my corona. Uh, pretty unfortunate. Was really excited to see that. We're hopeful that it gets scheduled for early next year. They're talking that it may happen in Texas now, um, uh -huh. which, of course, would allow fans, uh, which is a little bit ironic considering that one of the opponents currently has coronavirus and they're looking to a place that would allow fans and potentially spread more of the virus. But anyways, that's a, that's for our other podcast. Yeah. Uh, stay away from that one. I think that, I think that Garcia is going to have his hands full with Campbell when they get in the ring. I really do. Campbell is a hard nosed guy. He doesn't back down. He's, he's not uh, really phased by any showboating or, or uh, you know, guys that are, overly quick or, or speed, um, you know, Lomachenko had his hands full with, with Campbell did. last year, and that was a tough fight for him. And I don't think a lot of us thought it was going to be a tough fight um, no. going Not into it. And I think a lot of people gained even more respect for Campbell from that fight, seeing how difficult it was for Lomachenko to pull that off. And he definitely lost some rounds. Yeah. Um, I mean – Maybe Lomachenko, to some extent, was, was a little bit exposed there uh, in, in the fact that, um, you know, he struggled a little bit with, with, this, uh, with this bigger, longer guy. And, um, you know, I, I think this is going to be a great challenge for, uh, um, for uh, Garcia to have to go in there and, and face, uh, face a guy that could hang in there with Lomachenko and, and has the long reach and is awkward and, and so um, I'm hoping that fights like this can help to usher this lightweight division into, you know, possibly a golden age of lightweight fighting uh, like we've seen in the past 
where all the great fighters are fighting each other. Now they can go and fight other guys in between, but but the goal is for the names to be fighting the names. And, and in some cases, the guys to be uh, fighting multiple times because it's unclear after one fight or two fights who is really the better man. Um, so th this actually brings me into Colt's Corner for, for the week. Um, I want to discuss uh, Boston's own uh, Tony DeMarco, who uh, was a, a recent, um, recently enshrined in the uh, Boxing Hall of Fame in Canister, New York in 2019. And um, he held uh, the uh, title for one fight. He held the welterweight title for one fight. And for years, he was looked over as somebody who was taken into the Hall of Fame because he only had it for one fight. Well, he, he lost the title uh, to a guy named Carmen Basilio, um, who was considered one of the pound for pound best fighters of all time, who had upset um, Sugar Ray Robinson, who is considered the pound for pound best fighter of all time. So uh, for a guy like Tony DeMarco to have beat a guy that beat Sugar Ray Robinson, uh, that was enough to put him into the Hall of Fame. And um, what, bring, what brings about Cult Corner this week, um, unfortunately, my all-time favorite announcer, uh, Tommy Heinsohn, has passed away in rest Boston. In rest in peace. And um, this guy was a player, a coach, and an announcer. And he was incredible at all these things. He was also a, a, a very talented painter. And um, I had one opportunity uh, to meet him uh, at the Celtics draft party uh, in 2017 when they chose Jalen Brown, your boy. And uh, I had a chance to talk to him. And what they say, when you're talking to somebody who's a celebrity, talk about something other than what they're doing. Don't talk basketball. I talked boxing because I, I knew he was a fight fan and I knew he was friends with DeMarco. So, we, so we're, I got a chance to have a nice conversation with Tommy Heinsohn about boxing. And, and basically what he told me was him and the other uh, great late uh, Celtics announcer, um, Johnny Most, used to go to the fights together. And uh, DeMarco fought 28 fights at the Boston Garden. Uh, he lived in the North End and he would walk to the fights. Uh, he became a professional at 16 years old under the name Tony DeMarco, uh, that, which was his buddy. And uh, th this guy was just, just, just straight slugging. And um, after his career, he moved out to Phoenix, and uh, the Celtics had uh, the 1976 finals out in Phoenix. And uh, I, I said, Tommy, uh, I, I had read that you, you went and visited um, Tony DeMarco's bar out in Phoenix. And he just said many times. So, so inside the ring, outside the ring, on, on the basketball court, uh, you know, behind the microphone, th these guys were stand-up guys, and, and they also like to uh, go out and throw a few back and tell some stories and have a good time, uh, just like myself and the wild man here. Defend those big, trends big, to it. big shoes, big shoes to fill. I would agree with you, and uh, I know you're not a huge fan of the – white mamba but uh filling those shoes but uh, we'll have to see what happens scal scal uh, you're doing your best scal <laughs> you're doing your best uh well we appreciate that calls and thanks for taking us for a little walk down memory lane that was uh that was fun to hear and again rest in peace to the late great tommy heinson he he brought uh, a lot of joy and, and a lot of laughs into many homes for the last 30 years, plus years, as, as the voice of the Celts. And it's going uh, to be a big change, not in a good way, not hearing his voice um, for years to come. But okay. as Marcus Smart said, he didn't love the Celtics. He lived the Celtics. He lived the Celtics. He did. And that was, uh, that was the difference. Changing pace a little bit. We've got another uh, big fight coming up this weekend. Terrence Crawford and Bud. Sheffield, England's own Kel Brook. 
Oh, sure. I'm not really sure what to make of this fight yet. Uh, we've got a booming Walter Wake division. We've got Errol Spence taking on Danny Swift Garcia next month as well. Um, we've got a lot of potential fights out there. And I can honestly say I was not expecting Terrence Crawford to be fighting Kell Brook. I think that top rank does a great job at protecting Crawford. Um, I think he's a hell of a fighter. I think he's pound for pound. He's one of the best on the planet. There's no doubt in my mind. But Absolutely. I got to see a little more out of him. I got to see a little more than Kell Brook. I mean, Kell Brook, sure, he had the IBF belt for, for some time. I understand that. Um, but does he deserve to be in this fight? I don't know. So, you know, you bring up a good point in the fact that uh, they've been protecting, top rank's been protecting Crawford. Obviously, uh, and they've been doing a good job of it, obviously they think Kell's the guy uh, that Crawford can dispose of. You know, he, he's a name. Uh, he's fought Spence. Uh, you know, I don't think he, it was a wise decision for him to fight Triple G. Uh um, saying that he was only a man and he was going to step in there. And, and I applaud his courage. But Triple G um, cracked his orbital bone. So it, I don't know if he's been the same since then. I don't know if he's damaged goods. Uh, but he does only have those two losses. And, you know, I think he, he has the potential to, to make it a good fight. And, and let's hope uh for Crawford's pedigree uh in, in seeing you know what he's capable of Kel does make it a, a good fight yeah I, I think that Kel is a very fast starter um he's got good speed he works great angles on his punches he's got the footwork he's a hell of a counter puncher um he's definitely towards the back nine of his career at this point um he put up a great fight against Spence he actually Took a few rounds from Triple G in the beginning. There was no question because obviously Triple G struggled a little bit with, with Brooks' speed. I, I, I think that – you actually, you are right with the speed. Uh, yeah. I recall that. But it, it, that was also at least one of the rounds. And call, call me a Triple G fanatic because maybe I am. It was when he was interested in getting hit in the face multiple times yes. uh, just, just to get him into, psyched up and into the fight. Also something that you enjoy on most Saturday nights. Yeah, certainly do. Uh, hanging out with guys like you, I, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, I think that he's going to keep it interesting in the beginning. I would not be surprised if he stole a few rounds in the beginning. I really wouldn't. I mean, three, even maybe four rounds. Um, but he doesn't have the power that's going to that's gonna affect Crawford that much. I mean, you're, the one thing about Brooke is that you're not going to out-condition him. He's going to have the stamina. He's in... He always comes to fight. He's always in great shape. Um, he can easily go the 12 rounds with you. There's no question about it. But that's if he can take the punches. Now, right. his only two losses have both been from fractured eye sockets. So if he can somehow avoid getting hit in the face <laughs> over 12 rounds on Saturday night, I think he might stand a chance. Is the likelihood of him not getting hit in the face uh, – there? No, I don't think it is. And I, I think, think the stronger likelihood is for the turkey in three consecutive, uh, or not consecutive, but three uh, orbital bones shattered uh, in three losses in his career. I, I think that's where we're. I think that's where we're moving. If you want to get fight. if you want to get all spiritual with it, Crawford actually might fracture his third eye, the mind's <laughs> eye. So he's got to be pretty careful in there because uh, I don't think his vision is what it used to be either. And he's taken a whooping to those eye sockets. Um, yeah. And my understanding is he had to have inserts placed in there to, to stabilize them again. So um, he's going to have to be careful. He's, he's been on a little bit of a win streak since he lost to Spence, since he lost a belt to him. But um, it's going to be interesting to see. There's no doubt. Speaking of Spence, he's coming off what has been an incredible, incredibly scary and odd year for him where he almost lost his life just over a year ago, I believe. Yep. And 
he's now going to be getting in the ring with a top 10 welterweight in Danny Swift Garcia, who you and I have seen fight many times on television, uh, whether it's been with Porter or, um, you know, Thurman. He, he's had some great fights in there. And yes. he's got his work cut out for him with Spence. We're going to find out if Errol Spence is still the Errol Spence of old. Uh, he never lost his belt, obviously, but he hasn't fought in a year, and he suffered a devastating car accident, which, unfortunately, he was at fault for. Um, right. And we're lucky that he's still alive. He's lucky that he's still alive. But I'm interested to see if he can still pull off what he did before because he's got a very good pedigree about him where he's got good speed, good footwork, excellent power, and he's got great ring IQ too. He, he's aware – in the ring when he makes a mistake and he's able to correct it before there's a problem. Um, I'm interested to see if he can still hang in there with, with Garcia. I think Garcia is going to provide a challenge for him, especially because he hasn't fought in here. Yeah. I, um, you know, I think it's important uh, that he goes out and wins this fight decisively. And he's going to, uh, you know, fight a guy like Garcia that he's beating somebody um, who's not just, you know, a ham and egger, so, somebody uh, who, who's substantial um, because he, he needs to hit the ground running here. And, uh, you know, you, you can you can see, you'll be able, we'll be able to see how he's responded uh, to what's, what's happened to him. And, um, you know, uh, boxing such a mind game and, and going through something like this where you almost lose your life and getting thrown out of the front windshield and you really took a beating in that regard where he's hospitalized and things like that um starts to give you a different perspective on life and um you know it, taking a beating like that it, it once he gets in the ring it, it it could it could bring him back to that night where he's thrown from the car and and uh give him a flashback or or something like that so it's going to be very important for for this uh young man's career for him to to win decisively and just just uh, just to keep keep running. Yeah, you know Spence. Uh, he's a fighter. He was he was born a fighter. He's been a fighter. Um, but I did not think it was out of the realm of possibility that he was never going to fight again. Yeah. Uh, I mean that was a when those videos emerged a year ago of that crash and and everything that went down and his condition afterwards and what he looked like afterwards. There was a good part of me that said. I'm not going to be surprised if he doesn't get in the ring again. Even if he was able to, like you said, mentally, I don't know if he was going to be ready to. So I applaud him for getting back in there after a year. And uh, I think that he definitely has his work cut out with him with Garcia. Garcia's put up some great fights before. And uh, does he stop Garcia? I don't know. I think he wins the fight, but I don't know if he stops him. Yeah, 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 Gar Garcia... You, you can you can put him through a car accident and it, it'll, it'll come back out for the next round and you can hit that guy with anything so so maybe that's what his uh, trainers were looking for for a guy that's just going to uh, gonna keep coming but if you think Spence is going to go out there and roll over after having an accident in the words of Judas priest you've got another thing coming got another thing coming. Yeah, a little classic rock action. Oh, sure. Heavyweight division. Big fight next month. Huge fight on the zone. Anthony Joshua against the biggest heavyweight challenger we've ever seen. Who brought Pulev? Who? Who brought Pulev? Who? Yeah, the guy that you've had posters on your wall of him since you were a child when... People talk heavyweights. They talk Kubra Pulev. Am I right? Who? Who? Kubra. Kubra. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. Not this really. Is, this has been one of these, these mandatories for AJ for some time now. And this is another one of those fights that I'm not paying $100 a year for DAZN to see. Uh, you tell me that he brings in Kubra Pulev as a sparring partner? I might flip the TV on and see how sparring goes, but... <laughs> I am not interested in seeing Anthony Joshua fight Kubra Pulev due to the fact that you and I do pay an annual fee of $100 to watch these fights. We will most certainly be watching, yeah. but, but this isn't a fight that I want to see. Give me AJ uh, Fury 
I mean, heck, give me AJ Ruiz trilogy. I'm more interested. That's the kind of fight I would watch on a Wednesday evening uh, while I'm eating some soggy string beans and, and steak tips. Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely can find nothing else to do. Yeah. And uh, when there's a pandemic going on worldwide. Sure. I don't think we have much of an option. We're going to be watching the fight, but. Yeah. They got to give me, and, and they got to give us something new. Uh, speaking of a potential opponent, this is a name that's been floating around for at least three or four years now. And we had the opportunity to watch him fight last weekend on DAZN, on the Haney Gamboa undercard, was uh, Jilly Big Bang Zhang, or as most Americans call him, Big Bang Zhang. Uh, great, great name. Great, fantastic name. Uh, the giant from the East, big dude, has not had a ton of fights in the U.S. yet, so this was pretty exciting to uh, be able to see. Um, I got to be honest, I was, I was pretty impressed. I was pretty impressed. I wasn't sure what to expect. I'd watched his highlights before. There had been talk of him of being a bit slow, a bit robotic, um, yeah. a, bit, a bit predictable, and I'm not ready to write off all of those things yet, but he fought a guy in Devin Vargas who's fought some quality competition before, and he definitely rose to the occasion. And the one-two he finished him with, uh, there's nothing like the good old southpaw one-two. And that left that came straight into the face of Vargas, which also somehow injured his knee on the way down, uh, <laughs> just shows you how much power the beast from the east brought with him. Yeah, so, you know, you don't think of – some of these fighters, uh, Kazakh fighters, you know, necessarily at, or Russian fighters as Asian fighters, but they, they are from Asia and they fight a little bit different down there. I mean, to, to see Big Bang, and I'm going to use the American pronunciation because just because it sounds so good, when, to see Big Bang Zhang get in there and, and go to the body and, and you know, uh, a lot of a lot of these American heavyweights, they're, they're just headhunters, and, and this guy has an appreciation uh, for for the sport, and, and he he does have some boxing skills. Is he a bit awkward? Yeah, but uh, if you were six six, and, and uh, you know uh, uh, three hundred plus, you're going to be a little bit awkward too. Uh, so you know, I, w- I would love to see a Joshua uh, Zhang fight in the future. I would love it, and I would not write off a possibility of uh, Zhang having a puncher's chance in there because I do yeah. think he could. Um, I really enjoyed watching did. it. He certainly did, and I really enjoy seeing. One thing about that's great about boxing is you get to see so many different cultures brought into a ring, and like you mentioned, a lot of different parts of the world have different styles that we've grown to see. Obviously, the Mexican style is is very well known. Um, the Cubans have a, a pretty identifiable uh, defensive style. And How so about I think- King Kong, Big Zhang, uh, Big Bang Zhang. That just blew my mind. I think that could be, I, I don't even know if the building would be left standing. <laughs> Those are two big dudes. And if we saw King Kong Ortiz in there with Big Bang Zhang, I can promise you someone's going to sleep within four rounds. Yeah. Yeah. And both of them have got serious power, serious size, and uh, both of them have serious following. So I think that would be something that would be pretty cool to watch out for. Uh, I do want to say I'm a little upset. I was excited to see uh, a comeback fight of uh, one of our favorites, Lucas Big Daddy Brown from Australia, was going to be traveling yep. over to the UK to fight Fabio Wardley. Um, and I had posted some stuff on our Instagram page about that uh, to get people hyped up about it. The fight had just been made a couple of weeks ago. Things were all looking good. And unfortunately, uh, Lucas posted in the last week that there were some travel issues and um, unfortunate uh, cost of traveling from Australia to the UK during a pandemic were into the five figures um, for a flight. He wasn't going to have his uh, preferred corner personnel in there as well. And he had to uh, withdraw from the fight. Uh, I am happy to see that he didn't withdraw from the fight due to injury. I think that's something Mm -hmm. that we all are happy about, but I'm hoping that that fight can get made in the future or, uh, or any of them. I mean, he's got a couple guys in Joseph Parker 
uh, Mark Hunt, Junior Fa. We've got a few guys down in the New Zealand, Australia area that I think would make great fights for him. I would also love to see him fight a Big Bang Zhang. Uh, he's a former belt holder. He's been a heavyweight champion before, and I think that that would be a great test for Big Bang Zhang. And I think it would also be um, continuous good exposure for, for Big Daddy Brown. I mean, those are two guys that are going to come to slug. And they're not going to back down from each other and they're not going to back away from each other. So if you want to see a good old, old fashioned heavyweight slugfest, I think big daddy, big bang could be big. Could be huge. 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 I love it. Uh, wrapping things up for our pilot episode. Calls, who do you got in your pound for pound to watch out for? So, um, my pound for pound to watch out for um, is still Lomachenko, and there's a lot of there's a lot of people out there, a lot of people out there ready to write this man off, ready to write him off. He lost to Teofimo Lopez. He's he he doesn't uh, hold the belt anymore. Uh, he's not undefeated. You can't call him the pound for pound. Well, every one of his first 16 fights, when he when he's fought in featherweight, uh, in lightweight, there has been a belt on the line. This last fight, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what the hell he was doing. I don't know what his dad was talking to him about in the corner, if he was talking about Ukrainian dance, uh, dancing around for the first six rounds. But once the man started to fight, he was winning round after round. But he had just made such a deficit that there was, he, he, there was no way he was going to co come back. To me, if it's a 15-round fight, Lomachenko turns it around and wins it. Uh, and, you know, but it wasn't. It was a 12-round fight. Uh, you know, all the credit to Tiafimo and his team. And I, I would love to see that fight again. But... Uh, if you don't see that fight soon, I think that's a testament to the fact that Tiafimo, albeit being a, a great fighter and being able to upset uh, Lomachenko, uh, is not probably in a rush to get back in the ring with the with the either pound for pound or former pound for pound best in the world. I think you know there's a part of him in that camp. I believe that probably feel like they got away with one. Uh, so, to me, Lomachenko is still the guy that, uh, you know, unless uh, there's a wedding uh, or, or a funeral, you know, I'm clearing my schedule. I, I, I will be watching uh, Vasil Lomachenko. I like it. My pound for pound for this round is uh, I'm actually going to go over to the women's side of things and shout out Michaela Meyer. She's 14-0 and 0 right now, two All weeks right. ago on Halloween. She just won the WBO Super featherweight belt from Poland's Ua Brodnika. I apologize if I mispronounced that, but I believe I was pretty close. Uh, she's looking to fight. Apologize to her face. I'm sorry. I said I think you should apologize to her face. Get her on the show, and I will. <laughs> uh, excellent performance. Um, great fight between the two of them. Both of them came to fight. Kayla's really worked on her footwork and her speed. Looked fantastic out there. She's got good power, too, in both hands. She's looking to fight Terry Harper from England next. I would love to see that fight. Would be a unification fight. They've talked a little smack to each other online. I may or may not have been following along with Popcorn. Uh, would love to see it. Shout out to Michaela. Really upsetting at the end of the fight. They did not have her belt for her. So was pretty upset about that. You dream as a kid of, of winning the, the title belt and then raising it up in the ring and, and having all the pictures of you. She's already got a fight in front of zero fans during a pandemic, wins the belt in her home country. They don't have the belt for her. Uh, shout out to WBO for flying her down to Puerto Rico uh, last week, uh, as I saw on her social media, and presenting her with a belt down there. So that was pretty cool. They brought her down there that and they cool. gave her her belt and, and gave her a nice little trip down there. So shout out to WBO for that. But Get the girl her belt, man. They got to be on top of that. You're winning a world title belt on, on international television. Uh, you got to have the belt ready. I'm sorry. Yeah, you do. You do. It, it, it's, it's pathetic. Um, but you know what? 
hopefully she turns it into motivation just to keep winning. That, that's, uh, you know, that's the kind of stuff you, you, you put up in the locker room and, and say, they didn't have your belt. They don't think you're good enough. You know, so, so we're going to have to prove it. And, and you gotta, you got to keep that edge. So she has the belt now. You know, sometimes it is tough for these fighters to keep the edge. To me, that's just motivation uh, for, for her to, to re remain on the top and to keep the edge. I love it. Find some positivity in the moment. I like it. That about wraps things up for us for our first episode of the Boxer Briefs podcast. I am the wild man. This is Culls. We will see you soon. And remember, keep those hands up. And keep swinging. Keep the chin down. This is fights. This is big right. Fights. This is big drama show. This show is big drama show. We'll talk to you soon.